What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny First Impressions. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside Game Spots, Lucy James. Hello, Lucy. Hi. How are you? I'm doing very well, thanks. How are you doing? I'm From great. Living room. I was gonna say, what's it? What's life? What's life, life like on your side of the wall over there? Um, it's fine. I've closed the window just to try and not get the sound from like you coming through but other than that, sure it's it's, Im- it's impossible ah! you'll hear me throughout this uh, if you didn't know ladies and gentlemen uh lucy and i live together she's uh we're roommates i was gonna say she's my roommate but she we're, we're roommates it's it's yeah. a communal thing right uh <laughs> and that would normally wouldn't come into content all that often but we had a chance to play it takes two the new game from joseph ferris and Hazelight studios and of course this is a cooperative game there is online co-op but when they emailed us about it and we're like hey uh you want to take this demo and you want to play this game It'd be great if you have a possibility of playing it with somebody in real life. Me and Luce were like, wait a second. Just one wall separates us. So yesterday you came out here. We watched the presentation. Then we played an hour of It Takes Two, of course, coming out this March. At the very top, Lucy, what do you think of it? I really loved it. And I was really caught off guard by it. Because obviously Brothers, Tale of Two Sons, and A Way Out, uh, their previous games from Hazelight, are very... Brothers is very, very emotionally impactful uh i'm not gonna spoil why but it's like a really heavy game it has these moments of joy and levity um i never played a way out but uh just from the outlook it looks sure. quite serious it's two guys escaping from a prison and so playing um it takes two is i mean in the presentation like joseph himself kept saying this is a rom-com and i was <laughs> initially a bit uh I had a bit of trepidation about that because I'd, I've never really seen it work in a game before, but it totally works. And it was really, really funny. And that just, and very Pixar. I think that's yeah. the big thing is that I was so surprised at how Pixar it is. Yeah, Barry, if you want to toss it up, we have an hour of our footage, uh, Luce and I playing through the game together. And the yeah, that was gameplay. exactly scintillating gameplay. Uh, Cody and May, the parents here, Cody, the, the, the husband, and then yeah, May, the blue haired wife here. Uh, I was playing as Cody. You were playing as May. And yeah, I had, I enjoyed brothers. Fine. I enjoyed a way out for what it was. And I love the idea that Hayes like keeps trying to fo- make these co-op experiences and try to make these games that you really don't see a place for. Mm-hmm. And so from the announcement of a way out uh, from uh, uh, it takes two, I was like, oh, wow, that's a really cool idea. It's more co-op. It looks polished. I'm excited to see what it's like. It was on my anticipated list. But, at, you know, we could have played a little bit beyond the hour we played yesterday. And I turned to you and I was like, can we just stop? Like, I'm in. This is one of my most anticipated games of the year, bar none. Like, I was not only as you're everything. I echo everything you just said in terms of it looks like Pixar uh, in terms of I can't believe how well acted it is. I can't believe how ingenious it is. But even during the presentation, one of the things uh, Joseph Ferris was talking about was the idea that they're not reusing mechanics here. Like the levels themselves, as you go through, there's no, he kept saying, there's no shit to collect. Like the levels are meant to be enjoyed for what they are. And every one of them is incredibly unique. And as we played through it, that's what I was finding time and time again, all these intricate little details. And you know, the, when we get going here, even if you want to skip ahead a bit, uh, Barrett, one of the things we're doing is, you know, running around, uh, fighting the vacuum, playing with the vacuum. And just the way that was incorporated of, you know, loose, you'd have to hold up the hose. I'd have to get sucked in and, you had to aim me to shoot me where I was going like oh this is brilliant it's so like creative and what I was thinking about especially in the beginning levels it reminded me a lot of um the borrowers and Arietti and you know just these very small characters kind of making the best of just stuff that's discarded by yeah. the regular sized adults um and so the way as well that I think is really cool is that they use these items in the environment. So in this scenario, when you're kind of in the basement slash shed place, they were talking about the Hoover and it kind of, that's what really ties it into the fact that this is also a game about the dissolution of a relationship. Like the parents are getting a divorce and that's, you know, kind of the turning point in the story that sparks them being shrunk down and turned into these dolls. And so this Hoover becomes this point of contention where it's like, he was supposed to, what was he supposed to do? He was the one who broke he, he it. Was, yeah, he vacuumed up the wrong kind of stuff. He wasn't using it for just dust. He was using like a shop vac. And then she was the one who was supposed to fix it. And so they yeah. both failed in some way on it, which obviously leads to this argument in doll world. That was an argument from real life. Yeah, it's so cool to watch how that kind of plays into the gameplay itself. And the fact that they are being led down this path through this book, who we'll talk about in a second. But the fact yeah. that... Like, 
the whole thing is their kid wants them to stay together and so all of it requires them to be cooperating with each other you know cody will do one thing and may will follow up with another thing or a path will be blocked off unless one of them does this the other one goes over it and it's a really clever mashup of mechanics and story it's really just really well acted and really well written too and really? that was the thing about it, yeah. It, you know, when again, I was right there with you, and Joseph's like, "Oh, we're making a rom com, and nobody makes rom coms, and why don't they make rom com?" And I was like, "Well, it's just it's hard to do in a video game." And that was the thing that immediately caught me off guard playing it was how well acted Cody and May were, and the fact that like you know as they're going through and the you know the characters are performing all these different things, like I was engaged in the way I would be watching a movie or I would be watching a cartoon, and the writing's so good. And as they start to, exp I'm, I'm ex I can't wait to get further into it and see more of them explore their actual relationship because obviously right now it is a surface level thing you know the game starts with uh, the demo we got but i'm assuming it's all the game too right of like you know them sitting rose down and be like we're gonna you know get a divorce and then rose you know walks away not talking to them but then goes to her dolls cries on top of them and then you know throughout this demo it's explained to us that oh it's a magic spell she is dropped in real quick of like cody's like oh we learned about spells like this is a spell she's put us under and so that's where it is and this is here's dr hakeem right now who's this over the top book of love He's very much uh, has the same vibe as uh, Puss in Boots from uh, Shrek. from Shrek. Just the way that he comes in and he's like, kind of plays into the Hispanic stereotypes a little bit, though. I think actually, wait, is he Hispanic? Doctor Hakeem, I don't know what he is. He's got he's he, he's the Book of Love. So I, I that's what I I took away from a little bit of that the accent he's putting on. Yeah, but he kind of says like Olay and stuff, doesn't he? Yeah. So I'm not sure where he. Okay, we're not that's... sure the jet. We're not sure. We're not sure the <laughs> ethnic influence of this book. <laughs> but he has the same kind of vibe where he just like comes out of nowhere. He has this musical interlude, and he just kind of takes over. And they play like the thing. guitar, like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's honestly like just such a, a wild little character that comes in, and he the way that he discusses kind of through chapters through his own book. It's like. Yeah cooperation and pulls out a page and the way that he tries to kind of lead them down a path but at the same time they have a destination that they're trying to get to which is back to rose and he just refuses to immediately take them there he's taking them on this journey and they're kind of going to be damned if they don't follow him along because they're kind of stuck yeah he's you know he's obviously there to help them reignite their love or figure out what went on with their relationship but yeah his goal is to get them back together for rose so like every time you know rose is within arm's reach of the dolls right he'll sl he'll slam the door he'll pop up with his musical interlude and then disappear as quickly as he appeared to make sure they have to keep working together as you go through it and i thought that was another thing too you know in the presentation for us uh, that isn't posted uh joseph was talking about the fact of like you know you c shouldn't play this per you don't play this with a random people online don't don't do that you need to be able to talk he's like you can't just ping something and understand what to do and that was the i you, you hear that in a cooperative video game you're like sure okay but then you know jump cut to you and me doing it and where we were doing the countdown right of like all right three two one and then like having to hit the button or time out uh, you know as we slide down there's a lot of ratchet rail sliding going on in one of the sections that's coming up here in the vacuum and having to time everything correctly you see really quickly where it is about cooperation even in the real world yeah totally and it's like when you're doing stuff, because also you don't get really, uh, you don't have a really bad penalty for dying either because yeah. you're the kind of make-believe doll. So if one of you falls off the edge, which I did a lot, because, and that's another thing, the game feel is really, really nice. You kind of have this, you're light enough, but you also have enough of a weight so that as you're kind of jumping and dashing around all the levels and stuff, you feel, it feels really good. But it also means that I was just, I just, kept undershooting on all my jumps and kept dying but there was so there was you'd kind of reappear straight away you might have to be a little bit further back and the other person would have to wait for you but it just felt like you're not necessarily going to be penalized if you're not really a game player like you could yeah. take this give it to someone who's not a game player hundred percent, yeah, and I think that's because it's got those traditional controls. And like right here, you're seeing right, like it's double jump, and then you have the dash in there, right? So I wasn't expecting it to feel so much like Mario when we started up, right? Like not knowing what you're getting into, and uh, just having seen a little bit about it, you, you, okay, it's a co-op platform or whatever. But you get in there, and it did feel tight. It did feel like I was, we were in control, and we knew what we needed to do. And I think there are enough forgiving mechanics, like you're talking about, that you know, 
are designed so that it is pick up and play and whoever wants to get in there like i think of you know they have the the mario wall jump coming up or we already saw maybe in the introduction of it and one of the things there of just like you know the ability to stick to the wall if you don't hit anything to give you time to think about what you're going to do in the next puzzle or how you're going to address it i think really helps it's funny you mentioned Mario because they the, that's the thing that I was noticing is that they do the the Mario kind of mechanic introduction where they give you a new mechanic um so for example the hammer and nail thing and they introduce it to you very very slowly you get to grips with it and then they just increase that challenge until yep. the end it's this great connection where you know you have to be in sync with the other person you're doing timings and then you nail something oh that was, that eh. was undeliberate but like you nail the the two of you working together and it's just it's again it's story meets gameplay in this yep. really great loop and honestly like doing that boss fight with the um what do you call them the the toolbox toolbox yeah and it's just you kind of both come to the same conclusion at the same time about what you have to do and then yeah. you know halfway through you just automatically going where you need to go working together and it's fair it's, can you scrub probably it would be like three-fourths through this video looking for a toolbox where loose is gonna have a hammer on her back i'm gonna have nails a little bit further. I love this binocular bit there. Actually, it's behind this. It's behind yeah, this, right? It was after we beat him, we go to this uh, binocular section. So yeah, if you jump back a bit, bear. Uh, this is where I was talking about with more of the ra the ratchet glides or whatever. Okay, right, so oh, yeah. this is the this is the cutscene after it. So just a little bit further back. There you go here. So you're fighting this toolbox, right? And you know, a whole it, again, it's working together. If you notice right now, Cody there who just died, and there's this cool mechanic of you're gonna respond no matter what, but if you tap Y, you can come back quicker. Uh, Cody has three nails on his back. Uh, May there, Lucy's character has the hammer head on the, her back, and it was about working together, right? So I can, th as Cody, I can throw the nails and then recall them like Thor's hammer, but I can also use them then to implant on things, or as we will do here in a second, as we already learned, as we're about to beat the boss, uh, run over here, jump on that. Then Luce has to hammer it. I come up here and I start throwing the nails to work on this uh, paint can to blow that up. And yeah. that's what I think is where this game excels is the fact that it does work there. You know, we definitely got to points where we couldn't progress without each other. And that's how it should be right in a cooperative game. Like we actually need to rely and we needed to communicate on each with each other. Yeah. And it was honestly, it's like. I think because of the um, the easy and quick respawns as well. You're not you're never getting angry at the other person. Yep. You just kind of go, oh, okay, I'll see you in a sec. And, it, and that was the thing too is I wasn't even getting angry at myself. You know what I mean? Usually you die and you have to restart something. You're like, okay, okay, let's go. And, but like even as we were discovering like this, uh, these nails in the beginning. I'm not sure how close we are to the you know the very very beginning of this fight uh, were a huge pain for me to understand because I just could not dodge them for the life of me. And it was like the hammer, uh, the the shovel kept coming down and hitting me and all these different things. But yeah, it wasn't like I was impeding the group's progress, nor did I feel like I was being, we were being punished because I was struggling to figure it out. Yeah, it was honestly, and it just felt really good. And this moment in particular was like really, really cool because you get like the really good bit of slow-mo and the fact yeah. that, you know, I was playing as me and I knew uh, I was the one who did the setup and then the other one kind of delivering on it. And it's like that swaps too. It's like Cody will occasionally have moments where he's the one who's doing the main part of the puzzle and May is just kind of helping out in the background. And that swaps too. So you kind of equally get yeah. the, the glory, I guess, of solving puzzles. Yeah, and I think there's those... Uh... Just great aha moments. And if Bear, this is going to be way harder for you to do, but if you can just click back a couple minutes. One of the things in the lead up to this fight, I really enjoyed having to work with you with the nails with your hammer, where if you go like the run to it, so it's going to be even further back, Bear. Uh, we're going through and like, you know, you're uh, up ahead platforming in front of me and using the hammer to go around nails. So I have to throw the nails to time them out to get you there, to then get over there myself, to then work together. So you open up. The, it's like, there's all these different like you, you and you see it in your head like you're talking about. It's one of those like great, you know, video game serotonin moments we all have of you know what to do and now it's about executing on the plan. And the game does such a great job of giving you these tools, giving you light puzzles. You know what I mean? Not, not, we never sit, stood around going like, what do we have to do here? Like, what's the next thing to do? You as you said they give you the mechanic you start to understand it and then it's like even here we run up to this for the first time i immediately see that okay there's that thing i need to nail as i die but i need to nail it to the top right because we know the the yellow there is something that's a nailable surface so you need to get in here and then come over here and then throw it like that and even though so i say it's so easy and i'm not doing it this must have been the first time we did it but you understand what i mean <laughs> i get it it's like and that's the thing and i think the fact that it has that real world setting you sort of just it's easy to kind of uh 
put the thing like put the pins together and figure sure. out sure yeah yeah, yeah. What well it's got that great stuff of like toy story and honey i shrunk the kids together where you know you, as we saw in that cutscene, we scrubbed past right it is the hammer's talking to you right now but when we get everybody out of the toolbox they dance and they're excited to be that we saved them right but then it is all these things that yeah that exist in a real world there it is like it's really well done in a way i wasn't expecting in a way that i can't wait to play more of and I love the fact that you're kind of surrounded by these Toy Story-esque characters. Like, obviously, you've got Dr. Hakeem, who is the who's the through line that kind of follows you around throughout the whole thing. But um, you also have, you know, we met the tools from the toolbox uh, a little bit further forward as well. We met the, <laughs> the the squirrels and the rodents who are at war with the wasp. That's right. Yeah, Bear, if you want to skip a little bit further until we're into the tree section flying around. Uh, this is the binoculars I loved as they were looking out there. But then, yeah, so Mario jumps here as we start going up and exploring the tree, trying to get over to Rose's room. But then, yes, finding a secret door in a tree that doesn't lead to Keebler Elves. It leads, in fact, to squirrels who are preparing for their their war with the, uh, the wasps over there. Pretty cool. It's a way and it's a really cool narrative device. Because they're playing not only playing with sort of genre, but they could that's how you can play with gameplay. And so this is the point where you got a, a gun that fires exploding sap, and I got a sort of... I'm not even sure what kind of gun I had. You had a matchstick gun, yeah, and I had the thing that could shoot out the sap, right? And so, yeah, you see them uh, interrogating us here to make sure we're not part of the wasp army. And they bring in wasps. This is another one great one of them explaining, like, even to the creatures in the world that were inhabiting, our predicament is weird. Because the wasps keep killing us here, and then they're about to be like, why aren't they dying? <laughs> like, why do they keep coming back like this? And they're, well, they're clearly not with the wasp. Let's go and figure it out. And so, yeah, they enlist you with new weapons. And again, that's the thing of you, you know, just from the little bit we played, it was like, okay, cool. This is the vacuum section. This is the toolbox section. This is the squirrel wasp section. And so from the very beginning, here is your tool or mechanic to use in that area to then figure out. So, you know, like for vacuum cleaner, it was the figuring out the different suction tubes to then have one of us shoot each other over hammer and nail there and then yeah sap and uh, matchstick gun here to go through the rest of it i also love the fact that one of the squirrels was basically sort of uh q from james bond yeah, yeah, yeah exactly exactly yeah, yeah but, they're having yeah. fun with it yeah it's so it's so fun it's like they have this little espionage network and there's a really funny bit where they talk about all the stuff that's gone missing from the house yeah it's just been nicked by these rodents and um it's just a really like everything about it is just so out and crafted at least from the the time that we spent with it yeah i don't expect that to go away right it's such a charming game and it, it it's delivering an experience i don't think we get enough in games and it is very much polished to be this narrative adventure for you to go through and play with somebody and i do love the fact you know like again in the presentation and even in the trailer that they released last week there was the conversation of like oh well you know and then you you know since there are different things you can swap to the other you can replay it as the other uh, character whether it's cody or uh, um may and it's like one of those things like yeah okay but it's like no i would love to do that like it is you know your experience was so different than mine i have no idea how the hammer feels or what it was like to go swing around with them and like i can totally see where I, I want to beat it with Jen, but then I probably want to play it with Kevin, too, and try to play the other one. And also, well, that's the thing. Uh, Joseph Harris was saying that uh, no collectibles or anything like that, because yeah. he brought up a really great point, which was, like, it's difficult enough to get people to finish your game, let yeah, alone... Yeah, he was talking about replayability, like yeah. Um, and so while you, you'll obviously have a different experience playing as the other character, it's not going to be a... It's a linear story. It's not yeah. going to be wildly, wildly different. Which, which is what I love in games. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us your story. What is your story? Let's see what it is. And I think, you know, like, there's no, it's a rom com, but it's such a serious topic, right? Where I mean, you know, have it based around the fact that their daughter, right, Rose, is crying and wishes this into existence. Like, I, it's one of those weird ones that and he describes it as a rom com, but I still don't know if the happily ever after happy ending is them getting back together or if it's just that they can coexist because that seems to be their struggle right now. And that's, interesting that's a nice narrative design to have it was coming in of i want to i want to see what the other environments and biomes are going to be for sure and what the other tools will be but i also want to know hey how's this going to shake out for the characters yeah because i think that's you know we talked about how great the writing is but also they do a really great job of having a sense of these characters have lived together and loved each other for so long but they're at that breaking point in their relationship and so there are occasional moments where i think cody at one point refers to may as babe or love yeah. or something and it's just probably like it's an old reflex but it's totally. after they've done something and they've worked together on it and so i am genuinely invested in seeing if they will stay together or you know keep going on with their divorce but it's it's a testament to how well that's written because a lot of the times in games it's you know story in the backseat 
Yeah, that, that connection's not necessarily there, but with these two, and like I, I've said this a million times, but like how well the gameplay links with that story, mm -hmm. it's, it's just so clever. Yeah, I think that's what's uh, caught me off guard is that I think so far everything we've seen, whether it be gameplay, performance, writing, narrative, it's all top notch. Like it's, I think so far, far and away the best thing Haze Light has done. And that's yeah. saying something because they've made great games. But yeah, this one I can't wait to see all the way through and play a couple times. Yeah, and I really hope as well that EA sees kind of the, I mean, EA originals, you know, we've had a few great games from them, but I think this is where the tipping point now where games are really getting the kind of the budget is if mm. uh, in a weird way is this to say like, you got Fleetwood Mac in that trailer. Yeah, <laughs> like, they got a lot of good music, right? Yeah, yeah they got really good music. And so it's, I really hope that that's a kind of indication of future investment in this program because there have been some like uh, Sea of Solitude, you had uh, Unraveled as well. That have come through this program and uh, seeing Hazelight uh, excel at it is is something that's really exciting. Yeah, can't wait, but we won't have to wait long. It takes two comes out March twenty sixth on just about everything, right? Yeah, PlayStation four, Windows, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation five, Xbox one. It's all there. No Switch, but you know, come on, you got Mario over there already. All right, don't have your co op adventures in Mario. Don't worry about it. Uh, Lucy, any parting words? Uh, just please be excited. It's very fun. Good enough by me. Of course, keep up with Lucy over at GameSpot.com. Keep up with me on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games and let us know what you think of It Takes Two in the comments. Until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you.